Hi, how's it going? Welcome back. So I kind of went into hibernation over the winter, obviously. I went to fire up the furnace the first time and discovered that I was out of propane, which was strange. And upon further inspection, I discovered that I had a leak in one of the regulators. So $200 worth of LP waffled off into the atmosphere and probably damaged the ozone layer somewhere. So it was kind of cold in here for most of the winter. Finally got that repaired. Copying cray disks, even though they are cray disks, is really boring. I managed to only get about six megasecond off this machine with its adaptic controller. So it took about half an hour per disc. Anyways, enough excuses. Of the 24 discs, I had 14 that copied without issue. So over half. I uh, gave up pulling the entire shelf out and re-IDing the discs. Ended up being more of a pain than it was worth. So what I would do is do one um, side of the shelf at a time. So I'd plug it into the J4 connector, copy the Z ID0 and ID1 discs, plug it into the J2 connector, and then whichever discs on that side came up, I'd copy that. It did mean that I had to unplug and replug the shelves over and over and over again, which is a little annoying, but better than pulling the shelf out, popping the cover off, putting jumpers on the discs so I could have 0, 1, 2, and 3, or whatever. Um, faffing about with startup delays, things like that. This was easier. So, 14 discs, no problems, 9.8 gigs, uh, solid data, they're all the same length. One disc I got 500 megs worth before it started throwing errors across everywhere. So I'll probably have another crack at that at some point, but 15 discs all up. So the remaining nine discs, not so much. Somebody had suggested that, uh, for God's sakes, he hoped that I had tried to send the start command to the discs, which makes copious sense, except that, firstly, the discs were jumper to start on power on, and secondly, the controllers never came on the bus. And so, without the controller coming on the bus, you can't tell the controller to start. So, I'm assuming, I believe, I hope, I think, that the controllers are fragged. This is the setup at the moment where I'm going to see if I can manage to get one of these bad disks working. I have the PC with the adaptive card in it. I've got two disks, one of which works, one of which doesn't on the J2 side, as usual. An external power supply to bring them both up. And then uh, a bit of SCSI cable magic to hook everything together. I have powered this on scanned the bus, this disk comes up, this one's ID 0, and I can copy off it, no issues. This one, nada, niente, zip. So, what I'm going to try and do is trade the controller boards, and we'll see if the disk comes up. So, I have disconnected the two drives, the one that works, the one that won't. I've uh, kind of marked the one that does work, so that I know which platters and voice call and spindle worked before I mucked with it. The board that does work is ID 0, the board that does not work is ID 1. And from looking at the device there appears to be, well firstly I need to take this handle off. The main board is attached by four Torx screws, thankfully not security. And then there's a little subboard here with this nice big fat capacitor and choke. And it also has what appears to be the same size Torx bits on it, or uh, Torx screws. And then these two connectors that presumably go to the heads, the voice coil, the stepper motor that drives the spindle. Actually, there's the wiring, when the camera focuses, for the spindle motor. And that appears to go to this connector down here. So maybe this is just the voice call and the head pickup stuff. So, here goes nothing.
Note the uh, anti-static bag, just in case. Disconnect the upper micro ribbon cable. Hopefully it'll just lift away. There we go. Ah, the uh, bottom part of this connector is not attached to the shell of the disc like I thought it was. So that required an awful lot more effort than I had expected. Um, then again, maybe I should have. So what I ended up having to do was to remove the drive from its carry case so that I could get enough access to this cable to pop it free. However, now I understand how it works, I probably shouldn't need to do it with the other drive. So, let's do that all over again, yay! So, the trick will be putting the good boards back on this disc, and although I said I shouldn't need to take the carrier off, to get the good board on, I think I will anyway, just to allow me easier access. Give me a minute. Okay, so we're following this up the next day, because I ran out of time and had to head back into the house, but this is where I left it. This is the bad disc with the good controller boards. I uh, took the outer casing completely off because it's a real pain to get to this connector here which appears to go to the spindle motor. You can see it's got a couple big fits on the side and a couple capacitors and a choke. Um, Presumably this is where bad things have happened, where the disc won't spin up, so, uh, but um, I can't just put this board on it with the casing on or else it'd be convenient to not have to mess with this board at all. Anyway, so I have it hooked up, power, SCSI cable, and in theory, when I <clears throat> flip the switch, What have I wrought with these hands? Ah, uh, the sweet sounds of the spin up. That's kind of weird. It's not initialized. There's supposed to be a 
Well, you know, maybe. Um, okay, uh, let's see what Linux can see. Okay, so we'll take our host. So it is on zero. So if we do a scan on host zero. <clears throat> What the hell? So the host has found the controller. It's assigned it an ID. Hardware error. No read capacity failed. Hardware no seek. Right. Well, that's cool. What the hell did I screw up? So I have the disk powered back down. It's surprisingly warm actually, the ICs, not the casing itself. Ah, for the love of God. Did you see it earlier? Because I sure as hell didn't. Firebox says that goes to the voice call. And the reason it wasn't working was because I forgot to plug it in. Ah, oh, it's an innocent mistake. Anybody could make it. Anybody. <clears throat> Let's try this again. Wait for it. Ha ha! Okay, so where we left it, we have our mini errors, and then I removed the disk from the bus before I powered it down. So if we clear screen and then do a rescan. <laughs> Unknown partition table. 496 blocks, 9.79 gigs, LSSI is scuzzy. Okay, big test. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, yeah. That strings that sucker. Hee <laughs> Sweet data. Life is good. So, I have been busy copying data. Yes, throw the horns. Of course, this does mean that, that I'm now going to have to spend the next week or so pulling the eight other disks out, removing the handles, removing the base trays, removing the carriers, moving the logic boards, and then switching this guy on, which is going to be a little boring and time consuming, but such is life. Anyways, now the weather is warmer, I will try and plow through those and we can get back to reg regular schedule programming shortly, which would be bringing up the VME chassis. <clears throat> Anyways, I greatly appreciate your patience and thank you so very much for all the comments. If you have been, thank you for watching. Take care.